everybody. Thanks for being here, and uh, thanks for the uh, patience the last few days. Um, I think you all saw the uh, statement today. We uh, decided to part ways with uh, Coach Nick Nurse. Um, we want to wish Nick Nurse and his family um, the best of luck. Uh, thank him for everything he's done uh, in this organization, uh, including um, helping us win an uh, incredible championship, incredible 10 years. So um, uh, tough, tough, tough times. And um, I had a great uh, conversation and conversations with Nick um, today and the last week. And we um, really wish him the best of luck with, uh, with his family. Uh, you know, it's a good question, Doug. Um, I think that game the last year summed up um, like what has gone on in this organization. Um, the feel, the spirit uh, of who we really are. Um, it's, it's been very disappointing uh, for us, and um, we want to gain our momentum back as a team, um, togetherness, all the things that I think culture we have stood for here, I think we lacked this year. Did you, did you see that eroding over time, or did it just sort of pop up in the last month of this season? Well, you could see it uh, throughout the year. You know, like um, there was never that full excitement. There was never um, that full spirit. There was never... Um, that feel of like togetherness. Um, we all saw it. You all saw it. It's not something um, we're making up here. We win two, and then all of a sudden, you know, like it goes another way. You seem like you yeah, gaining, and then it goes another way. And um, it's not one person or one finger to point, and there's no pointing a finger at Nick. I have to take responsible uh, responsibility for this too, uh, and. Uh, as a leader of this organization, uh, I will always do that. Uh, and but um, it's it it wasn't it wasn't us. Yeah, this this year wasn't us. I think everybody saw that. Uh, sorry, why did you uh, when you say you point to the way things kind of unfolded this year and. I mean, the team is very inconsistent. Often, inconsistency, inconsistency often comes when it, a roster is kind of challenged. It doesn't mm -hmm. have the qualities it needed. And, you know, you can make the argument Nick did a really good job finding ways to be competitive mm -hmm. given some of the shortcomings with the roster. So how did you deal with that in your conversations with Nick? And why did you decide it was a new coach that was needed versus replenishing the roster? I think changes are going to be made on all fronts, you know, like, and we're going to address that uh, with the team. Um, we saw um, how different players on our team um, would rise, would do well, but we never did it like collectively, and um, uh, maybe that could be fit, uh, maybe that could be uh, sometimes system, uh, sometimes role orientation. Uh, sometimes, you know, um, uh, accountability, you know, um, all the things that um, we think um, well, we're going to really look at, you know, in um, how our roster is built. Um, but we believe in the players we have, you know, like, and whether it's tweaks or um, major changes, we're definitely going to look at, look at everything. Masai, what are some of the qualities and characteristics you're looking in uh, for Nick's replacement? Um, we're going to go into that um, right after we get through this. Um, you know, to be honest, I have, we haven't um, gone through that exercise uh, yet. Um, it's going to be a lot of uh, conversations just internally, um, talking to uh, Bobby and uh, and the crew on. Um, uh, some of the things we're going to need, obviously looking at the roster and the fits. Um, but um, we got to build spirit back here, you know, like the culture. Um, 
those things that bring us together, you know, like to move like we've always done uh, here. And we need that back. This is, uh, this is very crucial for us. Um, with our culture, again, I'll continue to say that um, it's, very, it's very vital for us to have incredible energy, you know, that, uh, that lifts people and, and gets us to work together, you know. Um, have that overall organizational goal, you know, like to go win. And let's see the build um, next few years and see, see how that goes. Knowing how competitive you are and how much you hate to lose, how difficult was this past season? I think it was difficult uh, for all of us, Steve, everybody. You know, it, it's, it's really difficult. Um, I never look at, uh, honestly, I never look at the last 10 years, you know, like all I think about is how you win. You know, like I almost think that uh, sometimes we almost have to like validate the championship we won. You know, like that's how much we have to win here. And I believe that we're going to win again in Toronto. Yeah, I feel strongly about that. Um, uh, but to watch us play this year was not us. I did not enjoy watching this team play. And I think it, that spoke loud and clear to everything that I think um, went on this year. And it, it, it bothered all of us. It bothered Coach, too, you know. Um, and, uh, but sometimes we have to make change and we have to move forward. Um, um, we're about winning here, and I think um, we've not only said it, we've at least tried to do it. Um, and um, that's where we're going to continue to go. Sorry, I was just saying, you said uh, the team was lacking the energy, the spirit, the culture. Uh, did you have discussions with players before making these decisions for ways to make them? Was that something that was expressed from players? Uh, no, uh, uh, to be honest, you know, like we met as uh, as a front office staff. Um, we met with Nick continuously um, after the season was over, um, and that that was the process. That's our process here. After every uh, season, as we 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 evaluate, um, uh, but we had conversations with players um, when they were leaving, and. Um, they express themselves in in many different ways, you know. And again, it's not one thing that can you can point a finger at just one thing. Uh, but yes, they express themselves with about many things. You mentioned system earlier, and that's something that Fred kind of talked about last week. Is that he said he thinks it's time maybe to rethink the identity and the style of play. He mentioned chaos and offensive freedom specifically. Is that something that you agree with, and is that something that you'll strongly consider when looking for the next head coach? Is that next identity or style of play? Uh, yes, it has. To, like whoever we're interviewing, whoever we're bringing in, you know, like has to, you know, convince us of, you know, like a good style of play that we think, you know, like will fit um, uh, us, fit our culture, fit uh, at least some of our players or um, the players that we have. Um, as you guys know, in the NBA, you can't make um, every change, you know, um, all at once. Um, so we have to build through this. Um, so, um, yes, like style of play is going to be really key, you know, like to what, um, how this new head coach, like, defines what he wants to do here. Do you expect any of Nick's front row assistants back, or is this going to be wholesale pain? Um, we're well, making big changes, um, but um, I'm sure um, Bobby will have conversations. You know, we'll, I'll have conversations with some of um, with the staff, um, and and we go from there. Masai, at the trade deadline, you mentioned that the team was playing selfish, uh, and you were hoping that Yaku would help address some of that with his style of play. Over those final 25 games or so. What encouraged you? What were your expectations? And how did things play out? Um, you know, in in Yak, I know every a lot of people questioned. You know, like um, what 
uh, we were trying to do um, at, the, at the trade deadline. And um, just to explain it again, um, the way the NBA is situated now is there's a lot of parity in the league, I think we see. And uh, you don't necessarily have to tear down your team, you know, like to build it back up. And I understand the draft, and I think um, there are ways that we can get in to there. I think um, we, I think we have the abilities to draft well, uh, but getting a top 10 center in the league that I think fits with our team in terms of a lot of the things we needed to address, number one, selfishness, you know, like number two, um, I think Jakob has um, a lot of uh, high basketball IQ, um, a pass first uh, a center and I call him I call players like that a championship piece because you can put him on any of uh, the teams now uh, maybe except the ones that have uh, great centers but you can put a player like that on that team and um, he fits in like right away and we have to figure out some other parts you know like but um, that caliber of a player to me you know like is worth us paying attention to everybody always says you know like oh, why don't you have a center why don't you have a center why don't you have a center for a long time and it's just finding the right one you know like finding the ones that the one that can fit uh, and can play and um, we f at least we found um, a piece there that hopefully, you know, like uh, as we build these pieces together, um, can can amount to that. Are you happy with the way that the younger players on the roster, uh, you know, the guys in and out of the rotation or, or with 905 have been developed at this point? Uh, I think the answer there is no. Um, um, obviously, you know, like some of them um, played more than uh, the others, I think, um, out of all the young players, maybe Christian got maybe the most opportunity. I uh, can't tell with um, at the top of my head with minutes, but um, with Malachi and Delano and Ron and um, Precious and all, all the young players we have, I think um, one of the things um, we talked about was um, maybe utilizing some of these players like a little bit more, giving them, you know, like a room to actually show uh, if they have or if they don't have. And I think um, we, we didn't do so well, you know, like um, with that uh, this year. And I think um, that hurt us some in developing our young players. Talk about culture as a foundational element. But it's very opaque. How do you rebuild culture after part of it has been lost? Specifically, what can you do? I think it's by making major changes sometimes, and this is a major change we've made. Um, there are things you have to shock, uh, you have to hit, you have to. Um, I think there has to be uh, some kind of friction, uh, some way, uh, to uh, to do that. The culture is the culture here is has been honestly like um, we love it it's incredible I think we follow the culture of an incredible city um, people um, humility everything that we stand for here uh, togetherness and we lost some of that but I don't think it's nothing that we cannot build uh, right back up again um, some of this stuff sometimes you know when these things happen um, not winning pronounces it a little bit more, but um, we believe like we'll we'll get right back, um, uh, even if it's slowly back to where we feel that we can be as an organization and as a team. Just following up on that, do you see kind of a parallel to 2018? You needed that friction, and obviously made the coaching change in the big trade. But how do you compare it to the franchise now to that point? Honestly, like I never look back, you know, like maybe one day I'm, I'm in a farm in Nigeria, you know, like 20 years from now, you know, like I, I'll be able to look back at those things. I don't look at them like that, you know, like I always want to look at like what we can do, you know, like how we can uh, build this thing to be, um, how to win, you know, like how to, like we always want to win here. Uh, it's, it's, it's. That's what sports is about, you know, and um, 
Uh, so uh, honestly, I don't I don't compare and and look back. You know, um, I was different era, different time, different. You know, uh, some different players, and um, hopefully we can uh, build back to where um, we're at that level where we want our culture to be. Is there something you can take from that coaching search to this one that you learned along that way, or is it just two different situations? Uh, no, I think the coaching search is, 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 is different, you know, like um, um, I think uh, Teresa, Dan, uh, Bobby, they did an incredible job in um, just detailing like the process of what we go through uh, in, in finding uh, a next person uh, to do this job and um, I th um, we're actually even learning more uh, to see uh, what the nuance of these kind of processes are going to be, and um, and we'll put that in place. You know, like I'm I'm excited about that. You know, because um, you get to meet people with uh, different minds and different types of thinking. You know, with um, with the mindset of winning. Do a timeline in place? Uh, not yet, Doug. You know, uh, um, this has been hard. You know, the, like the last week um, and a half and. Um, I think um, once uh, this day has gone through, you know, like then I think later on this evening we can begin to like, uh, like attack all those things then. Well, you, know, you don't want somebody by a draft lottery or... I, I think lottery. having somebody by the draft will make sense for us, you know, like um, I, I think that that would make sense for us to have to go into that with a head coach. There's an old expression that you win a championship and you walk together for the rest of your lives. Uh, and you do what? You walk together or stand together for the rest of your lives. Yes. I've heard that in many sports. Yes. Um, knowing that and knowing what happened here, how difficult emotionally it was this party? I'm very. Uh, so you say you, you look at everything, looking for other major changes. Player-wise, are there any untouchables players you want to keep building with? You know how difficult it is. You know, like I, <laughs> I just saw Nick. You know, like um, we we met this morning. You know, like, and when you see him and he says good luck with those guys, you know, like that's tough. You know, like he's 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 he means well. You know, like and we mean well for him too. You know, like this was, there was nothing contentious, nothing. It was actually like a, an unbelievable thing to go through that process, like with him and the spirit that, um, that he had, you know, like through this. So I commend him for that. I commend Bobby too um, for that. The whole organization, you know, like um, you are right. We're bonded in something that um, will never, ever, ever, you know, like uh, go away. Why did you feel the need to meet with Nick, you know, not just this morning to, to let him go, but um, through this process? Like, like, you know, you had 82 games in five years, mm -hmm. and, you know, why, what were you hoping to accomplish or learn, or, and why was he willing to participate in these meetings this week? Like, what, and what, was, the, what was the process there? Because of the year we went through, because of what we've gone through the last three years, you know, like it's not it's not been easy, you know, um, with everything, you know, and um, I have to look at myself too in the mirror um, with, with these things, you know, and I think we're winners, we want to be winners here, and um, we're well, detailed, we're just a detailed organization, you know, and um, if a coach or um, an employee or a player is not offended by um, the details and everything we're going to go through, we're going to do it like respectfully, um, we're going to go through that, you know, and you, you, to me you have to do that. Uh, he's a great basketball mind, so um, we, we really have to do that. We have to look at the future, you know, and things that will help us also, you know, like as, as I said, this is humility, right? You know, like this is us as human beings and sports bringing us together. I, I, we all have to get better. We all have to get better. But winning and the future is where we have to look. Was there a possibility in those conversations, the conclusion could have been, uh, you know, 
we it's more of a roster issue or a scheme issue and are we willing to address either of those things and if so let's continue like was that was that on the table at all the decision that's been made i know now but yes. i'm saying as you're going through it yes yeah, so all well everything was, was inevitable it was going to end with him being fired and uh, no everything was on the table everything was on the table just going back to spirit and culture for a quick second when nick made those comments in philly pregame mm -hmm. what kind of shift did you see or how did it impact spirit and culture because i know you talked about like the city and the fan that you saw there was an impact there and it clearly was brought up to your team a lot how did you see it kind of impacted yeah, to me, you know, I think um, I, I'd lose my mind if I had to talk to you guys every day. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, I'd lose my mind, you know, like, but I honestly, like, um, you know what George Carr used to tell me? He said, I'm going to make six mistakes every year. Six. So you have to give me your six mistakes, okay? And... He'd make one, he'd make two, he'd always tell me about it, you know, like, so I think, you know, like, um, maybe possibly, like, Nick made a mistake that day, you know, like, I didn't use it in this whole process at all, um, and, uh, and uh, for me, um, the timing was, was not great, you know, like, but honestly, you know, when yeah, losing things, uh, I don't, I, like, just a little bit of experience that we have, you know, like, we're not going to use, I'm not going to use that against, like, like Nick, you know, so, um, uh, it's, uh, I think he'll, um, he knows, he knows that it was, it was a mistake, and we all moved on from it. So you talked a lot about how the culture shifted this year, but do you know why it shifted? Do you have a theory? It's uh, a good question, Mike. You know, I think um, sometimes there comes a time when there's a little bit of complacency, I think. And um, when there was a little bit of complacency with us, I think um, um, some selfishness like seeped in. Um, I think sometimes people uh, mention contracts to her, but I personally don't think contract is an issue because I think historically here the players know that we've taken care of the players here. You know, like there's been barely any players that that that's kind of what we do. You know, like is is um, we like continuity here. Uh, so I didn't see where, you know, like um, that was an issue, but uh, some people would say accolades and all the different things that, you know, players can get or what they are gunning for. Um, um, but, yeah, selfishness, like I think um, I mentioned it before. And I think the players know that, you know, they, they know, I think. Um, did that happen because of um, the system or different things that we did, or um, was it them individually? Um, again, I'm not going to point fingers now. I just want to know how we are going to do better. You know, like, and whoever wants to do better, whoever wants to play the right way, whoever wants to win, whoever wants to win is going to come with us. Like, like clockwork, your name has been associated with some openings. Your intention is still to stay in Toronto and lead this coaching search and be here for a while? Uh, until you guys kick me out, I'm going to be right here with you guys. How, nah. tough was, how tough was it to balance this season, uh, just the different directions this team could have gone? Obviously, at the trade deadline, there was a million rumors around this team. Uh, just mentally, how hard were those conversations to kind of navigate, uh, you know, not only this season, but sort of the future of the franchise? Yeah, I think um, with where the NBA is, Again, I mentioned like parody. Um, at the end of this season, I said it before, there's going to be 29 uh, disappointed teams, no matter how you look at it. Uh, and I think um, the trade deadline is a hype machine, you know? It's a, it, 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 there's, there's a lot of hype around it, and I don't know that you, again, I'll say you can make long-term decisions unless you have, you know, you're deciding to go like just one direction or break down your team. Okay. Or, um, so I think a lot of the options we had, 
at the end at, at that time will be available for us. You know, at the end of the season. Masai, you guys were coming off such a high the previous season. When did you feel that things started to shift? You know, even last year, you know, like um, when you are a growing team like us, you know, like did we kind of overachieve a little bit? Um, and um, and then this year, where do you measure that? You know, like with what happened last year. Um, Honestly, like those few first games when we came in, you know, like you went in thinking you, you can win any game. Uh, I think we had the confidence of that, you know, like and um, right around the New Orleans game and the Brooklyn game, I think um, it just something there, you know, like just didn't seem right, uh, to be honest. You know, like and it started, it started, Doug, you remember, yeah, uh, I know. Grange, you remember, you were there. And it didn't, there's something there that did not seem right at all. You know, like, and from there, it started taking a, a turn. But when you play the team, you're in a season, you, you hope, you know, like you want to do, you know, like you want to do better, or you see signs, you know, and, but yeah, it just was tough from there. Isn't the way that this season has gone, just with all the ups and downs, obviously been a really trying season. What would you say about Brad and Pascal, especially those guys' leadership throughout this season? I think they've been good. You know, like I think they've been good. I think um, Fred struggled the first half of the season. I think, um, and think, and I think um, uh, his body got right. Uh, he got right. I always say it when Fred's body is right, he's right. You know, like and he, um, uh, he's, he did, he did well. Uh, I think Pascal had an all-star season, all-NBA, uh, uh, hopefully uh, all-NBA uh, season. And um, we just have to figure out how all of that fits, you know, like with our team, you know, like going forward. But, yeah, those guys, you know, have been, uh, have been good for our, our club and they bring us that experience of uh, what uh, we've gone through before. You had talked before the season that, that your hope and intention was to have Fred here for the long term, has any of that changed after this season? Uh, nothing has changed, you know, like everybody we're going to do the same exercise we've done, you know, like and look through everything and look at, you know, um, a style of play of a new coach and, um, and what makes sense and what doesn't make sense and we, we, we go from there. When considering hiring a new coach, um, obviously winning and the results aside, what's the number one quality that you're looking for? Is that style of play or is that another aspect? Uh, it's a good question. Um, yeah, character, quality of a person, you know, like I think energy, you know, um, what kind of energy is, 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 are, we going to, um, are we going to get because we need that uh, now, discipline, uh, style of play, like just so many things that we're going to um, look into as we, um, as we start this search. Yeah, I think um, uh, we should always remember, you know, like that Scotty is 21 years old too, you know, and um, it's a baby, you know, <laughs> and um, yes, I, um, I, I understand the concerns they've been, there was about um, uh, last summer, you know, like, and um, when I think you come into the league and you have been pulled from different directions, you know, like um, it's it's sometimes tough. You know, I I remember being with him here, you know, like on him um, crying to me that he didn't want to go to the like, like to the NBA finals, you know, like because he had to go do um, something, you know, like and uh, there, there's so many things, so many pulls, you know, like, and, uh, but I think Scotty understands the discipline, Scotty understands his talent, Scotty understands, you know, what's at stake, and I think you started to see that growth and that change, you know, like a little bit over the co course of the season, and I think um, uh, he grew a lot this season, I realized a lot um, uh, this season, you guys have to understand too that 
um, studies from the COVID year, you know, like, and uh, jumping into this is, is different. You know, like, this is, this is new to his life, and I think there's going to be a lot of adjustments, you know, like we want, uh, he's going to do this summer and how he comes back, you know, in the future for the Raptors. Masai, you may not be able to answer this, but the amount of time you spent with Nick this past week and a half, did you ever get the sense that he was ready to move or ready to go? Um, I never, I never looked at it that way. Um, honestly, I didn't pay, I didn't pay attention, I, I didn't pay that any attention, you know, or look for that. Yeah. Masai, you mentioned a need for self-reflection, and I'm curious, in your personal process, what changes do you think you can make to improve this team? Um, yeah, many things. Look at the roster, you know, like maybe in a, in a, in a different way, you know, I think um, um, we, have to f we have to figure out, like, shooting on this, on this roster in some kind of way. Um, we have to figure out uh, who fits and, and who doesn't fit, you know, like, I think uh, on the overall, um, maybe um, manage people better, you know, um, and uh, maybe see things a little bit deeper, you know, like, because when I... Uh, when we hire people, you know, like I, I let them do their jobs, you know, like uh, that's, that's been a strength of ours, you know, like the last um, 10 years here, you know, like, but I pay attention now, like to be a, uh, a little bit more. Masai, at Media Day, you said that, you know, OG's not a kid anymore, that he's got to show that he's one of the leaders on this team and that this was a big season for him. How proud were you of the season he had, you know, leading the league in steals and Uh, I think he grew, you know, uh, like uh, more importantly, you know, like as a person, you know, um, when we met with him uh, in his, um, I don't like to call them exit interviews because exit interviews are like old now, you know, um, we just meet with these guys and discuss. Um, and he was very mature about it, you know, like um, very precise, very mature, and um, even his interaction you know, with us. So um, you saw the growth in the season, you saw the end, and um, hopefully that translates into, you know, like um, really good team play and team chemistry because um, he is one of the best two-way players in the NBA, you know, like pound for pound. Masai, when it came to Jeff Down, um, you know, how do you think um, your team handled that situation and kind of can you go through why he wasn't, you know, included as part of that? Uh, you know the development of uh, of Jeff has always been. Um, uh, I think we played him in as uh, many games as we can, but um, uh, it just came out at, came at, to a time I think when we um, maybe ran out of games, and um, the, there was an organizational dis decision. You know, like to choose. Um, will uh, to 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 play in those games because um, we needed maybe more experience if we were gonna um, play more. But and also we knew that Jeff is part of this team. He's going to be part of this team in the future. Um, Jeff has been here every day uh, here, so um, maybe not handled uh, the best way. But um, uh, I think. The overall view of this is Jeff is part of our future. The decision not to use Thad in the final 14 games, was that a coaching decision or an organizational decision? And was that more about basketball or the business side of it? Yeah, nothing. We don't, we don't do that. You know, like everything is basketball here. You know, like I don't pay attention to like what, I, like honestly, like when I heard that, I was like, what's going on here? You know, like. Coach can play anybody he wants to play, and I don't control anybody's minutes or what they do. So, I, uh, you know, when you look at most of the teams that are, you know, kind of the bottom third of the league, you know, including, yeah, I guess the bottom third of the league, you can kind of see what their direction is, what their plan is, who knows if they're going to execute it. Um, how, how would you articulate your plan? I know you can't give us A, B, C, this is what you're going to do, but, you know, you have three free agents in your top six, you're down a draft pick, you're down, I think, three second picks. 
and you know coming off of your pretty disappointing year. So, like, you know, how to an outsider, like, how would you explain what your plan is, what your trajectory is, um, given that set of facts? Uh, there were 26 teams in the NBA a week or two weeks before the playoffs that could possibly make the playoffs. Uh, my um, uh, best parity in the league, and I, I just don't view that um, breaking down a team is the only way to build a team. I think when I look at the trade deadline or I look at players that we have, I think we have, there's a lot of value. When you talk about the pick, I think we um, we got something that's a huge piece. Uh, so I don't consider it that we lost a piece. We got Jakob Prodl um, by it. And uh, in terms of plan or building a team, uh, you continue to build, you continue to win, uh, you continue to build the, these young guys to get better. And I think they're getting better individually, but we didn't get better as a team. So that's on me. You know, and we'll figure it out. If our players were not getting better or didn't have value, or um, uh, then there would, I think there would be issues. Uh, but our players have value, and uh, they got better individually, but um, we didn't get better as a team. Lastly, um, when I look between 41 wins and 47 or 48 wins, you know, like, yeah, what's the difference? You know, like, and... I remember in Denver, when I was in Denver, you can win 51, 56, 50, whatever we won there. Kobe Bryant was coming to kick your ass. Yeah, every day. You knew what the end game was. Do you know what the end game of this playoffs is going to be? I guarantee you nobody knows. Not one person knows who's going to win this year. Yeah, can't say. Right, but in terms of like, building a more robust roster, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, that comes over it's, time. It's good to have higher picks. You, you know, you, you traded down in the draft last year. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the pick, you know, other teams went the other direction at the trade deadline, and then the, they're you know, well ahead of you in the lottery, as an example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, absent the ability to draft really good players or really good prospects at the top third of the draft, let's say, the top, you know, like how do you kind of find that next player that can fit with a group where your top two players are almost 30 or 30? Uh, you build up to that. I think um, we still have uh, draft picks going forward, um, trades, uh, getting better. Um, you never know what's going to come your way in this league. Um, at the end of the season, there's always a player that wants to move or wants to change. Uh, that's... Um, the new free agency, basically. Yes. Everybody wake up to that. Everybody says, will free agents come, will free agents come, will free agents come. Free, agent, free agency doesn't happen anymore, really. Yeah, the new free agency is play, players change teams. Players have a lot of power now, even when it comes to the trade market. Like They often push their way to certain teams. So when you talk about the culture and all of that stuff, how important is it to become an attractive market to those star players who might eventually hit the trade market? Like, how much of a focus is it just to, again, be an attractive market for those teams? I think we'll always be an attractive market. You know, like, I think that's uh, sometimes a little bit um, overrated. You know, um, I think we'll always be a, an attractive market. It just depends on the player and the type of player. You mentioned uh, Scotty's youth and to take him as as he is as a young player. Do you think his personality meshes with the guys who are sort of at the who are the most experienced and at the top of the roster with your team? Uh, sometimes those things show when you're not winning. Last year, I don't think there was a concern about that. I think that's fair. And I think your question is fair too, um, but. Um, We'll get it back together uh, to win in. And again, uh, I, Bobby, we are going to look at fit, you know, like and changes that uh, we can possibly make. Um, but I don't necessarily think it's like personality or, or, or character.
you know, like um, these guys have really high, uh, high character, and yes, Scott is 21 and Pascal is 28 or whatever, but you know, it's all playing together. Yeah, I don't think you could tell what Pascal was going to be after like one year, two years. I don't think we can tell like what Coloco is going to be yet. Um, and some of, I, I don't know that we can tell what Delano is going to be yet. You know, like that's incredible young talent, you know, like, but just hasn't panned out on the court. Malachi, um, been up and down, but um, I think there's talent. It just hasn't, um, hasn't come out yet and we're still um, developing and this takes time sometimes and yeah maybe we could be wrong you know like but we still believe in those kids as talent. Was there too much of an emphasis or maybe hope is a better word uh, on internal growth going to the season as opposed to addressing some of those things many of which you've already talked about that were issues last year as well from shooting to half court offense like was was there too much pressure I guess on the guys in place to, to get better in those areas? Well, we've always said it's not going to be like straight line, you know, like, and this is the bump on in the road, you know, like, um, these things happen, you know, like, study some other teams, you know, like, um, Boston went to the Eastern Conference Finals and then they were a five, 500 team, I think, if I remember right, you know, like, but, um, you, these things take time, you know, like, we, there's no more patience in sports. But to your question, Josh, we, we are, we've always emphasized that, you know, like internal growth, you know. This is what we've always tried to do here, you know, like, and it's the same questions everybody had with, you know, like the other guys, you know, like, but sometimes it just takes time, you know, and you know what, if that doesn't work, you know, like, guarantee you will find a way. How would you characterize your relationship with MLSC and ownership as a whole um, over the past few seasons? Oh, it's been great. Uh, you know, I have uh, no issues with anybody, you know, and um, but Larry Tannenbaum, um, uh, Merkel, Edward Rogers, everybody, you know, like um, we have a um, we have a way that we do business that has worked for years, you know, like, and we'll continue to do it. Um, Larry is the chairman of the team and I report to him and um, they let me work here, and um, <coughs> there's been no issues at all. We're coming up on 45 years, everybody, and we have a style of staying long to me, but we're going to be a lot of questions. What's the status on Otto Porter Jr., and does he still figure as somebody you want to have available to you on the roster, or um, you know, honestly, I mean, he could have filled the, filled the need had he been healthy, but. What, uh, what's the situation going forward with him? He hasn't been with the team for months. Yeah, that was the beginning of a, like another unfortunate situation. You know, like you get an experienced shooter, you know, like a big player um, that has a great basketball IQ and uh, could fit in with this team, but um, never, never worked out and had to have surgery. So um, we'll see how um, his surgery um, heals. Um, he's in that process now, but. Um, the plan is for him to heal and be part of the roster next season. Do you see uh, the new CBA coming in? Does that impact? Can you see yet how that might impact any of the changes or how you go forward? Or is it too soon to kind of digest what's coming at all? I, I think it's too soon, you know, like, I, and I'm not sure I'm even allowed to comment on anything. So you've seen the last two seasons building around forwards, right? And then sort of talked about that a lot in the media. Building their own way? Forwards. What have you taken away from the strengths of that strategy, and what are some of the weaknesses of that strategy in your opinion? Well, these strategies, you know, like uh, we talk, we talk about them, you know, like until you win, they're not. It's not. It, it's not working, basically. You know, like that. That's that's what I've learned. I know. Um, even the way Golden State played, I think George Carr played that way, Donnie Nelson played that way, um, D'Antoni played that way, right? You know, like, and until you win, you know, like, it's not, 
Yeah, yeah, it's 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 always going to be some kind of um, a failure or not successful, you know. Um, so to put it, you know, like but we believe in it, you know, like we just have to uh, add more shooting, you know, and. Um, uh, but yes, we still believe in guards and players that are less than six nine. You know, like it's not that we don't, but sometimes it's hard to find. You know, like those kind of guys that. Um, uh, but we, we still believe in in what we do. Do you believe in shooting as a skill that anyone can sort of develop, or do you need to add more shooting sometimes with players who have already proven that they can shoot at a high level? Um, I think you can develop shooting depending on your mechanics and uh, and form, uh, but um, yeah, sometimes the sh shooters are, are guys just that just have it, you know, like in born in them. The league has been changing a lot over the past. Year. I mean, one season, the two or three seasons especially. Um, you can see that in the playoffs. Do you think that this team is still ahead of the curve uh, in terms of building a team for the future? I'm not one going to be one of those that sits here and says we're ahead of the curve, you know, like we're trying to win, you know, like we're going to try to win, you know, like and, and be the best in the NBA. And I think um, we have to look forward to the next 10 years, um, to the next five years, you know, like we have to build that. I don't uh, believe that it happens overnight. Uh, and we've seen that. You know, it's not a straight line. It's not linear. We've said that before. Um, we're going to have ups and downs, and this one was one of the downs. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>